Hello and welcome to this screencast on using for loops for plotting in MATLAB. One of the useful ways that looping can be used is to automatically create and format graphs of data and functions. We're going to take a look at three quick examples of how this can be done. In the first example, we're going to suppose I have several sets of data that I'd like to plot all at the same time. For example, over here in my workspace, I have a, a variable called INPOP, which shows uh, the uh, Census Bureau data for the populations of three different counties in the state of Indiana. Over here in column one are year values, and these are measured in years since 1900. Uh, again, the variable is called INPOP. I'm going to dock that back into my workspace. One way to make, uh, and suppose I want to plot all three counties as a scatter plot on the same set of axes. Now, one way to do this is to simply plot each um, county individually in separate plot statements. And that's not so bad if I have just three counties, but trying to scale this up, if I had 10 or 90 counties, it gets obviously very tedious. And besides, all that would be changing is I would just be plotting a different column in the same variable. So if that column is the only thing that changes, and it changes regularly, we can automate the process with a for loop. Let's go over to my M file editor and do that. What I want to do is plot the second column of my INPOP variable versus the first, then the third column versus the first, and then the fourth column versus the first. So when we can automate this with a for loop is to type for i equals 2, 1, 4. This will let i, the counter, start at 2, then go to 3, then go to 4, and then I will just give it a plot statement. I'm going to plot uh, IN, POP, the first column as my x variable, and my y variable is going to change. It's going to be IN, POP, and I'm going to plot the ith column. And let's give this a look so that it has a dashed line and blue uh, circles for the markers, and then I'm going to end. So again, what will happen here is it will plot po uh, population column 2 versus column 1, then increment and populate, uh, plot population column 3 versus column 1, and increment again population 4 versus population column 1. Click the play button. Well, I guess I have to save it. Let's just call this plotting 1. Save it and run it, and we can see something didn't happen. I only get one plot. This isn't exactly a syntax error, it's what we might call a semantic error. Uh, didn't violate any rules of the language, but I didn't plot what I wanted to plot. I only plotted the third one. Now why is that? Well, that's because when the for loops start plotting, uh, when the for loop increments to the next counter variable, it's going to wipe out the plot that came before it. So what I need to do here is add a hold on, and I can do this basically anywhere. I'll just add it in before I even plot anything. Now with that hold on statement there, every plot that happens is going to be overlaid on top of the previous one. So now I should get what I want, and in fact I do. So here the for loop allows me to plot multiple data sets on the same set of axes very quickly in a small amount of space. So in this next example, we're going to look at creating subplots using a for loop. So I have defined here x equals 0 to 2 pi with some very small step sizes. And let's suppose I want to create a subplot, 1 by 3 subplot, consisting of the graph of sine x, sine 2x, and sine 3x. Maybe I want to see the difference between those uh, argument values. Normally, I'd have to go through and write out three subplot statements. And if I were to do that, the first one would look like subplot 1, 3, 1, and then have it plot x versus sine x. And then the second one, I would have to execute a hold on. Oh, no, I wouldn't because this is a subplot. I would have to type in subplot 1, 3, 2, and then plot x times or x versus sine 2 times x. And similarly for the third subplot. Now, the only thing that's changing here are this variable here, this argument and subplot, and this number that's being multiplied to the x. If that changes regularly by a fixed step size, I can use a for loop to automate it. Let me write a quick for loop that'll plot all three subplots in one statement. I'm going to let i, a counter variable, start at 1, step by 1, and end at 3. And what I'm going to do is type subplot 1, 3, i. That's where one of the changes was happening. And then plot x versus sine of i times x and every time and then end the loop and every time the loop goes through it's going to use a different value of i in these two places I've indicated in the for loop. Let's save this as plotting2 and run it and we see we get a nice subplot very quickly out of here. So the for loop here automates a series of commands that all look exactly alike. 
except for one change and a counter value. And if I knew how to do a nested for loop, which we will see in a future screencast, I could create subplots that have not just one dimension, but I could create, for example, a two by three grid of subplots. So this last example is actually a problem that someone who watches these videos emailed to me. They had a very large data set of thousands of points from observed data and wanted to plot all of, them in, all of them in a line, but then go through and plot only every 100th element of the data set as markers. Uh, we can use a for loop to go through and do this sort of sampling from a data set in this way. Let's create a related situation by letting x equal uh, lin space 0 to 5 with 1,000 data points in it. So this obviously creates a very large vector of 1,000 entries, and I'm going to let y equal x uh, times cosine x, again with a dot, because I want element-wise operation. Now, I'd like to plot all the data, but if I tried to plot them using markers, like I would in a real observed data set, there'd be so many markers that they would be all smushed together and hard to distinguish. So I'll, I'd like to plot the full data set as a line, maybe as a dash line, and then go through and pull out every 100th element, it's like sampling, and plot those guys as markers on the graph. So there are 1,000 entries in X, and if I go through and get every 100th element, this would plot 10 different markers. So to create the full data set, we're going to do the usual and type plot x and y. And I think I said I wanted to have a dash line, let's make it blue. And now for the markers, let's set up a for loop, because I'm going to go through the entire data set and select a few of them out at specified increments. What I want to happen here is that for every 100th element of x, let's plot that x value and its corresponding y value with a black square. Now the 100th element of x is x parenthesis 100, and its corresponding y value is y parenthesis 100. If I were to plot that one point, I would just type plot x100, y100, and then give it the marker value that I want, say ks for a black square. Now I want to do this for the elements in positions 100, 200, 300, and so forth through 1000. So now I think how I know how to create the for loop. First of all, I'm going to type hold on so as not to overwrite the graph of the full data set. And then I'm going to start for i equals, and we're going to use different looking step sizes and starting values here. I want to start at 100, increment by 100, and end at 1,000. So this will start the counter at 100, then increment it to 200, and so forth, and end at 1,000. And what I'm going to do is plot x of i, y of i, and then give it a nice black square and let's shade in that black square as well by using marker face color equal to black and then end. And now what this is going to do is it's going to plot x of 100, y of 100 with a marker, x of 200, y of 200 with a marker and so on. Let's save this as plotting 3 and run the program and we see what we get what we want. The blue dash line represents the full data set, and MATLAB has gone through automatically and selected out every 100th element and plotted it as a marker. So that's just a taste of how for loops can make life easier for you when you're doing plotting and visualization tasks. Thanks for watching.